One of the most common comments I get is that we spend an awful lot of time on diagnosis, but not a lot of time fleshing out a positive vision. In this video, I'm going to take the first step at rectifying that by giving you one. I have tried to design this to appeal to people right across the right without tripping over the various points of friction, such as over particular religious denominations, for example. So here is the broad goal of the vision in a single line. Let's call it a mission statement to build a self-sustaining local community with traditional values. That's it in one sentence. We might call this vision milkman localism and it's been something I've been developing for some time now. Let us define our terms. What is self-sustaining? That is a situation in which we can take care of all our basic material needs in a manner that can, essentially, endlessly loop, like the seasons of the year, and without outside help. What is local? Local is small scale, no more than three or four villages or towns. Local means that you know virtually everyone in the community by name and face. What is community? Community is not simply the inhabitants of this place, but a harmonious sense of social cohesion that gives those inhabitants a sense of peace and fulfillment. What are traditional values? Traditional values are those outlined by the perennial traditionalists, such as René Guillenon and Julius Evola, as well as the descriptions of traditional societies given by Oswald Spengler in The Decline of the West. Here are some basic assumptions in my thinking. Number one, community is good. Number two, local is better than national or global. Number three, sustainable is better than wasteful. Number four, traditional is better than modern. And here are some normative goals in the vision. Number one, to prevent nomadism. Number two, to prevent social and technological changes that irreparably disrupt the structures of everyday life and destroy local communities. Thomas Carlyle saw nomadism as the chief disease afflicting industrial Britain and saw it smash rural communities in his own lifetime as peasants were corralled into the cities. We have seen nomadism devastate communities in our own lifetime through mass immigration. Nomadism is disruptive in the extreme. Social and technological changes are the enemies of community, of the local, of sustainability and of tradition. Naturally, being a feat creatures of comfort, those born in the ashes of civilization cannot expect to do without too many of their beloved technologies. So we must be realistic about the extent to which modern milk toasts might adapt to older forms of life. So we need a vision that strikes a balance between modern conveniences and what I would call the spirit of traditionalism. There exists already something of an idealised version of such a community in an old British children's show from the late 1960s called Trumpton. In fact, there were three shows which formed a trilogy, Camberwick Green, Trumpton and Chigley. These were the Trumpton trilogy. All of these are on YouTube and I'd encourage people to watch them in their entirety. You may catch things that I have missed. Anyway, these were three villages in a county called Trumptonshire. And I want to make this county and its internal functions the model for our positive vision. You see, everyone in Trumpton had a place and accepted their place in the great chain of being. The mayor was in charge. But everyone did their bit. Windy Miller milled the wheat to bake bread. Mickey Murphy ran the baker with his family. Lord Belborough of Chigley ran a preserved steam locomotive line. Chippy Minton was a carpenter. Mr Clamp ran the local greengrocer. Mr Wilkins was the plumber. Captain Snort ran Pippin Fort in charge of the defence of Tromptonshire. Mr Hazel delivered the post, Mr. Tripp was the milkman, and so on. All these people had homes and happy families. All these people were happy with their lot in life and, crucially, did not aspire to more. Mr. Tripp was a milkman. His father was a milkman. 
He'd expect his son to be a milkman, and all was right with the world, because delivering milk to his neighbours and his friends is his calling. It is what God wants. It is what everyone wants, and it is what he wants. Amen. Now, if this is in any way appealing to you, let us ask ourselves, what would it take to develop and maintain such a community in the 2020s? Many of these sorts of jobs seem quaint and outmoded. Many of the technologies that we see seem to have been superseded by the more efficient mechanisms of global markets. Indeed, even in the shows of the Trumpton trilogy, mechanization is a constant threat to the village way of life. And there is a deep sense of melancholy and impending doom that lingers over the shows as a result. In my view, these shows, even when they were made in the late 1960s, were self-consciously reactionary. However, in implementing this vision, it will be required to break some sacred creeds of the right, because to have any chance of being fulfilled, we require top-down planning, social engineering, state-induced capital controls, deliberate retardation of markets and technology, and a recognition that an element of this is quote-unquote utopian, which is to say never fully achievable. But let us not make the perfect the enemy of the good. These are all the most difficult cells for most people on the right who want society to be organic and natural. But if that didn't make you turn off the video in disgust, please hear me out. So first, before we begin to drill down into specifics, let us think about our available tools. Let us consider the so-called four freedoms of the EU. Free movement of goods, free movement of capital, freedom to establish and provide services, free movement of persons. It seems to me that these four freedoms are the agents of nomadism and social disruption. According to Austrian economics, a free market with no restrictions will keep developing. To use Bomberwerk's phrase, they will become more capitalistic, more roundabout in their production methods. That is to say, the chain of production lengthens and more capital investment, more automation, more technology is used to create a greater output per unit of input. This is good if, and only if, greater or more cost-effective output is your aim. But our aim, remember, is not that. What is our aim? I repeat, to build a self-sustaining local community with traditional values. Thus, to create such a community, assuming, and this is a big assumption, and a whole other question as to how it might be achieved, but assuming that we have obtained the land and the total control of governance of that land, we will require, as I said, significant top-down planning, social engineering, and capital controls. Why? Well, let me count the ways. First, there is the question of free movement of goods. In order to flourish, Trumpton Shire cannot be flooded with cheap Chinese tat, or indeed tat from anywhere. In fact, there would be need of a blanket ban on the following. Any goods that directly compete with the core functions of the villages. Two, electronic media of any kind. Residents would have to be asked to hand in their iPhones, their laptops, their televisions, etc. when they first settled. Three, subversive and degenerate materials of any kind. And four, machinery that would disrupt the structure of everyday life, for example, by leading to the overproduction of food or other goods beyond the needs of the inhabitants of Trumptonshire. The smooth running of the community is predicated on these things. Second, the free movement of capital. Trumpton Shire could not develop its own indigenous structures of everyday life if any multinational chain or investment bank could just plonk their businesses down in them. That would disrupt the culture and take away from the essence of what Trumpton Shire means. Thus, number one, all businesses must be owned by residents of Trumpton Shire. Two, The business owners have a duty to maintain their traditions. If you own a family bakery, for example, the property must remain a bakery. If the family wish to leave bakery, they must find a local family willing to become the new bakers and sell the property to them. 
the buildings must be thought of as permanent structures in the town. At this address there is a bakery and always has been, and at that address there is a carpenter's workshop and always has been. Third, foreign direct investment in Trumptonshire is absolutely prohibited. Four, capital outflows from Trumptonshire are also prohibited. Investments must remain local within the firewall of Trumptonshire. Five, Trumptonshire would require its own hard currency, let us say Trumpton gold coins. Foreign denominations would not be legal tender and must be exchanged for Trumpton gold coins. Six, the money supply would be fixed by the following formula. Total population times 20,000 gold pieces. And seven, interest and usury would be banned. There would not be a need for loans at all. A bank would exist much like a safe for the safe storage of gold coins in exchange for a small fee. Third, the freedom to establish and provide services. This has already been somewhat covered by the above points, but uh, here are some additional restrictions. Number one, businesses would not be allowed to become chains or expand beyond their natural limits. For example, if the bakery already turns a profit by serving the inhabitants of Trumptonshire, there is no need to expand further. Growth threatens the rhythms of everyday life and is therefore not only discouraged, but also actively banned. Two, businesses would also enjoy monopoly rights in each village. If a village is already served by one bakery, it does not need a second one. Some limited intra village competition may exist, for example, between a bakery in Camberwick Green and a bakery in Chigley. Third, all attempts to open new businesses or services would be assessed by the authorities for their potential impact on the structures of everyday life. Ideas that might be easily integrated with no threat to the integrity of Trumptonshire's traditions might be permitted, but otherwise they would not be. There would exist a petition mechanism for establishing market demand for a good or service. If the would-be business owner could get more than 65% of residents to agree that his business is needed, then this would be taken into consideration by the authorities weighed against the potential cost to the traditional way of life. The precise composition of which businesses are required in Trumptonshire would have to be decided by the founders and the details might be debated upon. If they miscalculate, as is very, very pro probable, the process for approving new businesses in the early years of the settlement could be expediated. Fourth, let us consider the free movement of persons. There would be strict rules on who might buy a house in Trumptonshire as follows. Number one, no more than one house per person. Number two, renting is in any case prohibited. Number three, sellers of property in Trumpton, for example, must offer the property first to the other inhabitants of Trumpton and then to residents of Camberwick Green and Chigley before the property is offered up to outsiders. The sale of property is done by fair adjudication of market price and the seller cannot refuse an offer at market price from locals. Once residents leave Trumptonshire, they lose any such privileges in terms of buying back in. And of course, as per the usury laws, no mortgages at all. All pur purchases must be made in cash sum. Beyond this, there is the matter of taxation. The administration of Trumptonshire is responsible for maintenance of law and order, defence and fire service. Medical services are provided privately by the doctor and his team. There would be an initial 10% flat rate of tax across all employees and business owners, and this would be divided as follows. A change to the tax rate up or down would require a referendum of all inhabitants and a 65% majority to pass. The precise details of how defence might work is beyond anything that I'd know about, but at the very least it will require the sorts of missile launchers used in the Middle East which have proved effective against the best armies in the world. A stockade uh, would 
need enough firearms to arm every citizen and naturally there would be right to bear arms within Trumptonshire. Next, some additional laws. First, it goes without saying that subverters would be physically removed. Subversion is anything that can be defined as habitually undermining the mission statement of the community and the mission statement is very clear. Second, there would be freedom of religion, but worshippers would not be allowed to establish their own institutions unless they represent a raw majority of the population. Religions found to be propagating subversion would be banned indefinitely. Finally, who are the people governing all this? These would be called the corporation, led by the mayor. The mayor would have the following requirements. He must be over 50 years old and male. He must have spent 20 years of his life in another trade in the community dedicated to the fulfilment of the mission statement. He is chosen by the previous mayor and he holds the post until death. The structure of the corporation is as follows. Under the mayor, there is the captain of the guard who is in charge of defence, the chief of police responsible for law and order, the treasurer responsible for taxation and budget, and then four administrative heads for each of the four so-called freedoms and their restrictions. And so ends this thought experiment, which is simply a sketch towards a positive vision. Now, many hundreds of people will watch this and will likely think of things I have not thought of. Your suggestions can help means test the ideas here. Strengthen them. Make them better. Make the vision better. Strengthen it. Test it. Make it more robust, more realisable. This is just a start. Let me know what you think. As ever, your comments are appreciated. And I'll see you next time. By Foundations of Writing on the Academic Agency. To write clearly will help you to think clearly. The ability to communicate ideas in lucid prose is foundational to success in many areas, and it is a basic requirement in every walk of life. You will learn the parts of speech and come to understand the core functions of the English language, sentence construction and syntax, punctuation, style, and common mistakes. Once you see how mistakes are made, you will not unsee them. You will know for the rest of your life. Foundations of Writing. Buy it now. Be sure to like this video and subscribe. And if you really like my content, maybe consider joining the channel or donating or maybe even buy a mug. I am grateful for all of your support. Now get out.